So hyperbolic partial differential equation, partial u, partial t, plus a big U, which is a constant, times partial u, partial x. Let's say this is equal to 0. This is what we said last time, the simplest type of hyperbolic PDEs. And uh, what is a hyperbolic PDE? Right, we talked about uh, on Monday, hyperbolic PDEs, parabolic PDEs, and elliptic PDEs. These names usually take a while to sink in because they don't really mean anything to me when I initially uh, saw them. So hyperbolic PDEs are the kind of uh, PDEs that has waves in it, right? So remember, we have analytical solutions of these PDEs. They are constant along characteristic lines, right? And if you look at an animation of how they behave, so that's the same thing as if we do um, convection diffusion equation with a speed of, let's say, 2 and a no diffusion, what we get is uh, Okay, for any function we draw, it just uh, goes towards a fixed speed on to the right if u is positive and uh, to the left if u is negative, right? So that's the hyperbolic differential equation. So as in all finite difference methods, we have the solution u and uh, uh, x we are going to only store the value of u at discrete axis. So, for example, uh, let's give a very simple spatial domain. x is within 0 and 1, and what we discuss is going to extend into more dimensions pretty easily. Okay? And uh, let's start with a periodic boundary condition. BC stands for boundary condition. All right. So that means it's exactly like what we were saying. Any wave that goes towards the right of the screen comes back from the left. Okay. So that means the solution at x equal to 1 is exactly the same as the solution at x equal to 0. Right. So we don't need a duplicate set of variables. So this is x0 which is equal to 0, and we have x1, which is equal to delta x, and x2, which is equal to 2 delta x, etc., up to xn, which is equal to n times delta x is equal to 1, right? So delta x is 1 over n. How many, after we discretize this u, right, so that's u, with finite difference, we are only storing the value at these grid points. So how many unknowns are we left after discretizing with finite difference? How many functions of t's do we have? N? n? Why n? Because each, each grid point evolves in time. Each grid point evolves in time and we have n plus one grid points right from zero to n. But at the very end the solutions duplicate, so actually you're right, we have n. So how many grid, how many unknowns do we have in this case actually depends on the boundary condition, right? So for some boundary conditions, like periodic, we have n. And uh, sometimes uh, if you specify boundary conditions at both ends, which we will see, I think, in the next lecture, that is not appropriate for this equation. So if we do have boundary conditions on both ends, then the number of unknowns are n minus 1, right, because the two boundaries are known. If we don't have any boundary conditions, which is actually appropriate for some cases, but not for this one, then we have n plus 1 boundary, uh, n plus 1 unknowns. Right, so, so for finite difference, the number of unknowns actually depends on the boundary condition. And we call the values of these u's to be u0 as a function of t, u1 as a function of t, etc., and here is un as a function of t, which is identical to u0 as a function of t. All right, and this particular point is un minus 1 as a function of t. So the role of the finite difference is to discretize each term in this equation in a different way. 
okay so because we are only concerned about solving the value of the function at the discrete axis we are only going to look at this equation right this equation is actually an equation that has to be satisfied for all x and all t but we are not concerned about all x we are only concerned about satisfying this equation for x equal to each of these x i's at x i is equal to zero right okay well the reason is that we have n unknowns and we actually want to derive n ordinary differential equations for these n unknowns because that gives me just enough number of equations for me to solve all these n unknowns and now if i look at the equation being satisfied at these grid points what do i get is this term partial u partial t is actually equal to the ordinary derivative of ui with respect to t right okay and this term actually i don't know right it is a big u times the partial derivative of x with a uh, u with respect to x which over here for example at the x1 is the slope over here but i don't know the slope because i have forgotten the function okay so you have a suggestion oh no i said i said you, yeah you forgot it because now you're just you're considering each point in space is just a single ODE through time that's right so, so you, you don't know about the you have no way of knowing that there's a point next to you so you can't calculate the derivative. that's right so i cannot actually know exactly what the derivative is because i actually don't know what the value of the function right on the left and right to the left so what do i do the closest points I use the closest points. That's actually an idea we discussed in our first or second lecture, right? Is how to discretize derivatives. I mean, at that time, we didn't say what derivatives. We can actually discretize any kind of derivative using the method we discussed, right? So, but then we no longer have an equal sign. We only have an approximately equal sign, right? We only have an approximately equal sign, which is, uh, uh, for example, how do I discretize? What's the best way to discretize du dx? Any suggestions? Hmm? Mid midpoint? Okay. So that's, in some sense, the best way to discretize it because uh, we can have more accurate schemes, but then it involves more points, right? So the midpoint rule involves only two points and it's second order accurate. So we ended up having u of i plus 1 minus u of i minus 1 divided by what? 2 delta x. That's right. And then because the second term is only approximately equal, the whole thing is only going to be approximately equal to 0.